Okay, so inverses, pay attention. I think this lesson is really easy and you guys will do terribly bad on it. And I don't want that to happen because it's actually a really easy lesson compared to the rest of transformation. This one's a standalone in the unit. The curriculum states that I have to teach you what an inverse is. I have to teach you what an inverse is. I have to need to be able to come up with an inverse equation. And I need you to be able to tell me all the things about inverse graphs. So domain, range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. And I have to make you restrict the domain of an original graph. So when I draw the inverse, it is a function. Those are all the curriculum outcomes I have to cover for you. That's what the government told me. That's what I'm going to do. So here it says reflections in the line y equals x. That's one way they could ask for an inverse. Another way they could ask for an inverse is y equals f negative 1x. Another way they could say x equals f of y. Or they could say just I want the inverse, right? All four of those mean the same thing. Determine the inverse. So the great thing about inverses is x is in y switch. So this is the key thing here. x becomes y and y becomes x. So our mapping is really easy if it's just the inverse. Because our mapping will be x, y, all the coordinates on the original, on the inverse become y, x. So if the graph, if the equation, uh, the coordinate 3, 2, on the inverse it's going to be 2, 3, right? <coughs> Where do you think invariant points are going to come up? If when I swap them, I get the new point. When would an invariant happen? Nope. Zero, zero. Zero, zero would be an example. One, one would be an example. Two, two. Yes, we have, we have figured it out. Okay. <laughs> yes, we're, yes, yeah. Okay, so. Everyone will give me 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3. Those are all true. Shh. What you won't give me is 1.1 1 .1 and 1.1. 1 1.23 and 1.23. Pi and pi. Remember, even the decimals, all those places where the x and y's are the same, will be invariant. And that's on this thing, this, this y equals x line. It's kind of called the identity line. And it makes sense because in reality, if I said... Where is, um, where are the invariant points on this uh, graph? Most people say, oh, 2, 2, 3, 3. No, the invariant points on the graph exist when x equals y, right? Wherever the x is equal to the y, when I swap them, I'm going to get the same point. So that's also decimals as well. So if I draw the line y equals x, I draw that identity line through it. Anywhere it crosses through the identity line, I get invariant points, because that would also count the decimals. Let's forget about the decimals. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to write an equation. Now the catch here is, is that unless I ask you to write an equation of the inverse, you actually don't have to find the inverse. You might be like, what? Why? Because if I ask you anything about the inverse, you can get all the information from the original. Are you paying attention or you'll get lost? So what did I say? I said that if I ask you anything about the inverse, you can look at the original and give me information. Mm -hmm. For example, if I have the original domain, what is that of the inverse? Remember, x and y are switching here. The range. So if I have the domain of the inverse, I have the range of the original. Oh, sorry. If I have, well, it's technically true. But if I have the domain of the original, I have the range of the inverse. If I have the range of the original, what is that of the inverse? Domain, because the x's become y, right? So if my domain happened to have been x such that x and l are the reals, for my inverse, those x's are going to become what? Y. Y's, and what's y? Range, right? So your original graph can tell you everything about the inverse. So the only time I have to find the inverse is if they actually ask me for the equation of the inverse. If I give you the, if you want the y-intercept of the inverse, what do you look for on the original? X-intercept, because they would have flipped, right? <coughs> if I ask you for the x-intercept of the inverse, what do you look for on the original? Y-intercept, right? So they flip-flop like that. You agree? So unless I actually ask you for the inverse equation, you can give me the answers off the original. Well, this one asks me for the inverse. This is one of the worst done questions on the test, and I would say possibly the easiest. 
Because you guys just leave it blank. You're like, I don't remember how to do this. So when you hear inverse, what should you say to me immediately? X and Y's flip, right? Like if I say inverse to you, you should scream X and Y's flip. You know, I'd be like, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Inverse, X, Y, flip. That's what you should like literally scream at me if I say the word inverse to you, correct? So if I'm asking for the equation of the inverse, this is a fancy way of asking for it, I know that the X's and Y's switch, correct? So step one is to switch X's and Y's. That would get you half the marks. <laughs> But most people don't remember the first step and they give me a blank question. Okay? So if I ask for the inverse of a, an equation, you swap the x's and y's first. So this is my equation here, y equals x minus 5 squared. So I'm going to get x equals y minus 5 squared. And if this question was out of 2, you would have a 1 out of 2. Is that actually right now the equation of an inverse? Yep, that is. And more often than not, if it's a multiple choice, they'll move it into y equals. But this is the equation of an inverse. You're, you're actually done, technically. But we always are going to get it into y equals. Okay? So that's where the extra mark comes from. So remember that when you're trying to isolate a variable, you do reverse <coughs> bed mass. Um, but I have this squared here first, so I need to get rid of it. How do I get rid of a squared? Square root. And I'm physically going to square root with my hand, correct? So when I square root with my hand, what do I have to remember to do? Plus minus. If the square root was sitting there already, do you say, oh, silly people, they forgot the plus or minus? No. It's when you physically move and make this motion with your hand that you put plus or minus, right? So now I have plus or minus root x equals y minus 5. How do I get y by itself? Add 5. Now, some people will go. Why did I just switch back to bottom? Some people will go um, 5 plus or minus root x. Some might go plus or minus root x plus 5. They're the exact same thing. So you're not wrong either way. Okay? You can either take the 5 and put it in front of the plus or minus sign, or you can put it at the back. Most of the time, they'll put it in front of the plus or minus, so that's what I'm going to do. 5 plus or minus root x. Fun fact. When I have a root x, what can't x be? x can be 0. We can take the square root of 0. It can't be negative. So technically, you could follow behind and say x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? As a little comment, which is what we're going to do in the radical unit. All right. Our last step is to write f negative 1x to let them know it's an inverse. f negative 1x equals 5 plus or minus root x. Was that the craziest question you've ever had? Nope. On a test, it will be left blank. You're like, no. Yes. Because you'll see inverse and you'll forget to swap the x's and y's. So if you don't get that first step, you can't do the question, right? So this question is either done correctly or incorrectly. There's like no in between, 100% or zero. Because people either know to swap the x's and y's and then they can isolate y. That's not usually a problem. Or they just forget that they to swap the x and y's and they put nothing. Okay? So we're going to flip to the very back page. We're going to come back to this in a second. We, I just want to do some equations here. Oopsies. We'll do example six in a second, but I want you to do example seven first. I'm going to give you something easier. I know. That's why I'm writing it. You're writing it. Because <laughs> I want to give you an easier one than normally I just get six, but I want to give one easier first. Determine the inverse of 12. So, when it says to determine the inverse of an equation, the first thing you do is what? Swap x and y. And if you get to that step, most people get 100%. But a lot of people don't do that step, and they're like, this is left, I remember you talking about this. But I don't remember what step to do. Okay, we don't want that on the test. We want people to know to swap the x's and y's and at least get 50%. So, we're going to go x 
equals 3y minus 4 squared plus 6. So I try and remind everyone of this. When you're trying to isolate a variable, which is what we're trying to do, we're trying to get a y by itself, correct? Every time you're trying to get a variable by itself, you actually reverse bed mass. A lot of people don't realize that. So you do reverse bed mass when you're trying to get a variable by itself. So we have a plus 6, and we have a 3 multiplied, and we have a square, which is an exponent. So reverse bed mass says I have to do addition and subtraction <coughs> first, correct? Then I have to subtract that 6. So I'm going to get x minus 6 equals 3, y minus 4. And some people are like, well, I want to do the y minus, there's a subtraction sign. But that's in a bracket, correct? That's the absolute last thing you would do. Because bed mass, Sam de bed or something, I don't know. Sam deb. Yeah, we're Sam debbing right now. That's what we're doing. So are we going to do the exponent or the multiplication next? We did the addition and subtraction, so now we do multiplication and division. So we'll divide by 3. And I divide every term by it. So I get 1 over 3x minus 2 equals y minus 4 squared. How do I get rid of the squared? And when I do the square root symbol, I put plus or minus, positive or negative. So then I'm left with plus or minus the square root of 1 third x minus 2 equals y minus 4. And now I can add 4 because the bracket is gone. So I get f negative 1x equals 4 plus or minus square root of a third x minus 2. Example 6 above. This one? Hardest one I could give you. Try it out. If you had no clue how to do this or you're still stuck, I would start, right? Because it means that this is a harder one for you. If the previous one you were stuck on, I would start that. These are your notes to go back through and see what you struggled with and what you found easy. Where you like to write little side notes. So the very first step is always to rewrite the question. You should never be working your question through um, the actual question that's typed. Okay? Plus, our very first step is to swap x's and y's. So my very first step is going to be to write x equals 2y minus 1. 3y plus 2. I really didn't want to write a 3. Okay. So then I said your next hint would be to take that denominator and bring it up and distribute it into the x. Because as of right now, you can't do anything because you need to get a y by itself. So we're going to multiply by 3y plus 2. 3y plus 2. And then if I bring the x down, I'm still no better. So you actually have to distribute into the x. I'm going to get 3xy. You could go yx. You wouldn't be wrong. But for if there's like terms and stuff collecting, I always, if I have more than one variable together, I always put them in alphabetical order so that they're more noticeable what's an exact like term to another like term, right? Because if you see like 3xy and then 6yx, you might not think they're the same term when they actually are. So I always list my, if my um, variables are together, I list them in alphabetical order. So 3xy. Then it should be the 2 into the x, so I get plus 2x equals 2y minus 1. Then you want to get everything with a y, every term that has a y to one side, and every term that doesn't have a y to the other side. Okay? So I'm going to subtract the 2x over to this side, because it doesn't have a y. And then. I'm going to subtract the 2y over to this side because it does have a 2. I have a y. So I'm left with 3xy minus 2y equals negative 1 minus 2x. Now the reason why you do that is if the terms on the left-hand side all have y's in them, what can I just take out of both of them? Greatest common factor. I can take a y out. Do you agree? So I can GCF a y out. I'm going to be left with y 
when you take out a GCF, you end up with a bracket. 3xy divided by y is 3x. Negative 2y divided by 2, by y is negative 2. And it equals 1 minus 2x. Sorry, negative 1 minus 2x. And then how do I get y by itself? It's being multiplied by that. So just divide that over, the whole thing. So we get y, actually x negative 1x. Equals negative 1 minus 2x over 3x minus 2. <coughs> now had you moved the terms to the opposite side, the answer you would get is this exact same answer, but all opposite signs. So you would have gotten positive 1 plus 2x minus 3x plus 2. Exact same look, opposite sign. And the reason why you could do that is if I took a negative 1 out of the top and a negative 1 out of the bottom, GTX them, it would change all the signs, wouldn't it? And what's a negative 1 divided by a negative 1? 1, it just cancels off. So you could have this answer, or had you moved them to the other side, you might have gotten f negative 1 x equals 1 plus 2 x over negative 3 x plus 2. Both of these are correct. One of them would be in the multiple choice answers, right? Exact same opposite sign. All right? Sometimes they're written like this. 2x plus 1, 2 minus 3x. Is that the same thing? Can I move them around? Yes, as long as I take the sign with them. So I could write this as 2x plus 1, 2 minus 3x. Just whatever symbol's in front of the term you have to take with. That's a grade 10 concept, right? You have to take with what's in front of it. All right. Why don't you go to example three? This is the graph of f of x. I want the graph of f negative one x. What are you going to do? You're using, yeah, you're using, um, you're moving points, you're moving coordinates. So what are you going to use? Mapping. And what is the mapping for inverse? X y becomes y x. Go. Okay, let's see where we're at. So mapping. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have neg negative six, zero is going to become what? Zero and negative six. So I go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and over nothing. And I want a different color. Okay. Now remember, we do coordinate by coordinate by coordinate and do what it was. So it's going to be a straight line between the next one. So the next one is negative 4 and 6. And what's it going to become? 6 and negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Connect. Are the signs or anything switching? Are we literally just taking the x's and they become the y's and the y become the x's? Some people want to negate stuff. No, it's just they just swap. Okay? Then I have negative 1, 6. It's going to become 6 and negative 1. Then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 3. <coughs> it's going to become negative 3 and 4. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. Oops, I don't want to write it. 7, 0, and it's going to become 0, 7. Okay. How many variant points are there? There's one place where the x's and y's are the same. And the easiest way to check for invariance is just draw the line y equals x. So we're going to draw a dashed line where y equals x. So 
That means 0, 0. Is that not where y equals x? 1, 1. Correct? 3, 2. 3, 3. 4, 4. 5, 5. 6, 6. 7, 7. Negative 1, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 2. Did I expect you to get this right when I haven't taught it to you yet? No. So those of you who didn't get right, who cares? So we draw ourselves a little dashed line through it. Where would it go through? <coughs> right? So if you just want to know how many invariant points there are, draw y equals x, count them. How many times does it cross through it? That's it. So do I actually have to draw the inverse to find out how many invariant points there would be? No, I can take the original graph, draw a line y equals x through it, and count how many times it crosses. I wouldn't even have to draw the inverse, right? So it says label the invariant point. So this is the invariant point. To answer all four of the questions, I did not have to draw the inverse. Fun fact. If I want the domain of the inverse, so this is for the inverse. If I want the domain of the inverse, what do I look for on the original? The range. So the original was from negative 3 to 6, correct? So that's my domain. We agree? And my range of my, or my inverse is my what of my original? My domain. So what's this from? Negative 6 to... Seven. And the reason why is the original domain, to show it to you, the original domain, if I do set notation, is from negative 6 is less than or equal to x, it's less than or equal to 7, x dr. And what I tell you happens when it's the inverse? What do those x's become? <coughs> why? So in set notation, it's actually more obvious that it switches. So this would be this would become y such that negative six is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to is less than or equal to y. Come on, let's grab a bit. Y dr. So of the range, this was the do, sorry of the original. This was the domain, but now because it came y, it's the actual range of the inverse, right? X intercept. Do I need to actually find the x-intercept of the inverse? No, I could get the what off the original? The y-intercept, which is at 0, 4. So it's going to be at 4, 0 now, right? They flip. And I want the y-intercept. I just go find the x-intercepts of the original. This one's 6, 0. This one's uh, sorry, negative 6, 0 and 7, 0. Well, those are going to become 0, that's all, that's all, that's all. Right. 0, 6, great halted for a second, negative 6, and 0, 7. <coughs> right? All the knowledge. We're finishing this up tomorrow. I'm going to let you have till the 6 to work on your hand in. And I would suggest you actually work on your hand in.